Hello. Good morning. Good evening. Thank you for listening. This is a medical cannabis program, and I respect the law, and I hope you do too. Today is an open topic. This is a medical cannabis program, and I respect. There we go. Muted. Um, yes, sorry, today is an open topic, so I haven't put anything in at all. So I hope that you can bring your questions and we can get a discussion happening. And Aaron's there already. G'day, Aaron. What does Aaron say? He says, good morning, everybody. Thank you. Good morning, Aaron. Here's his question. For you and everyone else to ponder, including everyone we can consume, is there anything less harmful than cannabis? Hmm. Is there anything less harmful? Well, everything's harmful to a degree. You know, even like oxygen, if we have too much of that, or too much water. Like that Boston Marathon runner, he was a doctor, and uh, he had, I think it was eight litres of water, and he died. Uh, so, yes. But in I know what you're saying. In general, is there anything less? Well... There was, um, what was he saying? On LinkedIn, there was this Canadian professor saying that the context is taken out of cannabis so much, there's other medical drugs out there that aren't made a big deal of. And why is this one being such a, made, such a big deal? It's been stigmatised incorrectly and um, there's too much fuss being kicked up over it for what the harmful effects are. So I, I thought that was pretty insightful. It's, yeah. But there's, no, there's not many. As for a medicinal thing, there's so much positives for the negatives. So it's just more of a money thing at the moment and a legal battle. Because for a humanities types of battle, there's, um, it's, it's already been proven that it's fine. It's only been the last 150 years it's been outlawed. And now they're doing all the scientific tests and proving it should be turned over and it's otherwise. So it's, um, yeah, I think it's just an ongoing battle, mate. Good luck to all those in the power. <laughs> all those decision making, make all the rules and that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. Well, I have got some stuff to talk about before, the, before I get to all the other many questions that are flying in. <laughs> How you going, Ned Kelly? Nice to see you, mate. There's been an interesting thing about Australia, and who's it's not an, it's not positive for once. I actually I got a positive and a negative, but I got a big negative about flame in Australia again. But first, let's get to a little bit of Canon news. Japan lifts ban on cannabis derived medications. So good on them. So the parliament over there is sat and they legalise cannabis-derived medicinal products. Oh, I didn't read all this. I wonder if there's anything good in here. There's a few numbers. I love it, like the numbers. What's this? By comparison, 41% in Canada report having consumed cannabis during their lifetime and 44% in the States. And double-digit increase in consumption rate in Japan is more indicative on how low the overall baseline consumption rate was to begin with, that it is inactive of a cannabis use epidemic. <laughs> okay, that's one. Next one. This is Australia has exported one and a half tonnes of cannabis in 2022. This rare data shows. So Australia's can you believe they can't even supply for the Australian market? They've got it. There's, they import so much. And all the stuff sits in customs and goes stale. So to be exporting, it just goes all against health practices. It's only a money thing. It just annoys, it annoys me. Um, because there's so many people that are suffering and need this help. But no, they're just putting it overseas. It's like the gas thing in Australia. But anyway, back to this news. Uh, so, yeah, they just found that um, Australia's exporting a lot of medical cannabis that they're growing here. And then they're importing the cheaper stuff 
that is ineffective and has more harmful effects on it, like it affects uh, what it really hurts my throat, <clears throat> the cheapest stuff because it's really dry. And then I get weird feelings in my head if I smoke too much of it. That's not normal either. So, um, yeah, just pathetic. What's this say? Of the one and a half tonnes shipped out of Australia last year, one tonne landed in Germany. However, the amount of cannabis shipped to Germany in 2022 declined 26%. Shipped to Germany, see? Because they're not... Ex then producing more so they don't have to import more. Not Australia. It's all a money bloody thing. The United Kingdom was second with half a tonne imported from Australia. Yeah, and then New Zealand, France was supplying to everyone. Just bloody pathetic. But hey, look at this news. I was amazed to see this. Would Jews like to import cannabis from Africa legally? Well, guess what? You can. I was amazed to come up on this. And medical patients, as long as you've been accepted by the TGA, if you got TGA approval, cha-ching. Honest. Get a load of this study. <clears throat> I'm not going to read it. So it's just um, saying a lot more is being imported. And we know the quality, how piss poor it is. I'm not saying sorry one bit because that's what the quality is. Unless you've got top dollar, you spend top dollar, you're going to get some good stuff. But who can afford spending 500 bucks an ounce? <laughs> Dead set. When I smoke three ounces a month, 500 bucks an ounce. Yeah. So the rad bit's at the bottom where it tells you in step form how to do it. And I was surprised how easy it is. Finishing medical cannabis versus yep, raw. And this, this is quite a big article. There's the website up above. If you wish to do so, come on, populous. No, yeah, the populous strains, they're in court. Uh, I'll take it, can tell you about this bit. Uh, Kenetrek are in court over the name of their uh, one of theirs, rock ones they've called because they've stolen it off. I think it's Blue Dream or something like that. And they're in court with that. And I think they settled out of court because <laughs> they were using it. They thought they'd rename it and get away with it. No, they got busted. They can't even create their own stuff. It's ridiculous. Come on. Interested in importing? Oh, hang on. Where's the steps? Uh, that's the massive facility. Import. Benefits importing. Pricing. No. Branding. Logistics. No. There was a step form. What? I just gone and got rid of it? It said, it, as long as you've got, maybe I just read a bit more of it. No, it was down at the bottom. That's what it pretty much said. Maybe it's in here. I don't want to read it all. But it seemed pretty straightforward as long as you've got a TGA approval. Maybe it's at the top because it talked about TGA. Companies that wish to, it even said the, the person can do it. Just an individual person can do it. You don't have to be a company. You can individually import your own medical cannabis getting approval from the TGA. And apparently it's real it's real simple to do. There are several licensed LPs in Australia. These companies have invested heavily. No, they haven't. Research will like we can go on about that. Australian medical cannabis in a nutshell. No. Ah, oh, I've brought up all that talking about it. Anyway, if you'd like to do it, if you're sick of the Australian system, get onto this website and It'll be in this article if you read it all. I'm trying to skim down to see where it was. I can't remember. Because it, had, it had points just right down here. I thought it was like a few under this thing. Interested in importing it? Yeah, well, need to, something needs to change in Australia. Because the stuff, they're not allowed people to grow it because of the pathetic laws that they got and all the taxes and all that sort of stuff. 
and the import importing things are charging way too high. They're making top dollar out of it. Anyway, that's I'm not going to go on there. I'll spoil the show from going on too much about it. Next thing is a uh, Queensland government have put on a admission that they want to take from people about cannabis and driving in Queensland. So if you want to help the folks up there, get onto this website and put in your suggestions and fill out the survey on why it should be allowed, why it's just as safe. If anything, it's not going to um, cause any problems. Say hello to the couple who are rocked up. There you go, Aaron Shipwreck. Nice to see you, Shipwreck. What's it talking about? Uh, oh, I can tell you something interesting about Canada. They've um, found hot latent virus disease has been more prevalent than people first thought. They have tested down multiple tests from pathology labs and found that there's some, back in 2022 was when it peaked or when they, was, they found it was very high there and it tapered down over the past years. So it's been there for three years in BC, really full on. In other provinces as well, it says on that study, Ned Kelly, hey, how you going, Blinky? I'm furious about government stuff. Just don't start on women politics and that rot. It's ridiculous. Green bicycles, how you going, mate? Uh, I'll share this study on volcanoes. Today's an open topic. I'm just looking for something to talk about. I've got a, I just made a volcano video. So I've got a study that for that, and it's pretty interesting because it tells you about if you vaporize, it's got some graphs here on how long the actual vapor lasts in the bag before it's uh, the THC content goes down. And I was surprised. It taught me something. No. Uh, no. Delivery. Here it is. This one here. Oh, that's on the liquid pad. Uh, that's using concentrates. Is that it there? The amount of THC in a balloon, different samples and balloon chambers settings. Oh, that's on how much you get out of it from the temperature that you put in. And the bag effects. I think it was six. This was it. This is it here. So this down on the bottom x-axis is a storage time. So it goes from one minute here. This is in seconds. Hang on. Minutes. I gathered that as 50 seconds, 100 seconds. Storage time in minutes. 200 minutes. That's like two hours. Uh, I interpreted that incorrectly. I didn't see the minutes thing there. <laughs> I didn't have this screen blowing up as big as it is. God, my eyes are getting bad. Oh, no. Really? Oh. During this study, all balloons were processed within five minutes after evaporation. Why does that say... Oh, this is really confusing now. I and uh, I'll tell you how I interpret this. Firstly, just by the time it's left, the bag is left filled up to how much THC goes down because it sticks to the outside of the bag. That's how I did. So it starts off as 100%. The initial THC is still 100%. Then it slowly drops. And I thought this was seconds. So 50 seconds. I suppose minutes. Well, it's 100 minutes. I suppose it makes a little bit more more sense. So there's an hour, 120 is what, two hours? That's three hours. So after three hours, it's virtually all gone. That's how I now interpret this. <laughs> Great. Uh, what was the other one? Oh, for the oil. So if you've got the gauze pad in your vaporizers, uh, they've got those little tiny mesh stainless steel gauze pad things. You put your oil or concentrates onto it. This is how much time... Oh, look, this says seconds. This is how much time until it evaporates. So time in seconds. Yeah, so 45 seconds, it's gone. I remember it's good. 45 seconds, it's pretty much gone. So I was very interested, very amazed with that. They were saying you can put up to 10 drops or get your concentrate and drop it in. And, um, yeah, so it's, it takes, it's very quick. To, and if you've got alcohol, if you get the alcohol and so you burn the alcohol off of it, at a lower setting first and then put it on a higher setting and reap the rewards. I think that's all for that study. Yeah, that was, I found pretty interesting about that, the amount of time that it sits in. 
So it's so now I see it's in minutes. So really, after what's that? 40, 35 minutes. So after half an hour, it's gone down thirty percent. So after even a couple of minutes, it's dropped down. And if your bag's more stickier, more of this stuff, this bar graph would go down faster because it would adhere to it quicker. Yeah, something interesting I found. Any uh, uh, ridiculous? What's I want to say? So we can import cannabis from South Africa, but we're not allowed to grow our own. Well said, mate. Yes, exactly right. Yeah, if you've got a TGA approved thing, let's go back to that page then. If you've got a TGA approved medical script, you are legally allowed to import it. It goes, it, after you read this, it says um, there's only a, a couple of companies you can, countries you can do it from. I'll hear it currently. The majority of medical cannabis products imported into Australia comes from Canada with countries such as co companies such as them. Other countries such as Israel, Les Lesotho and Portugal also export medical cannabis products to Australia. The import of medical cannabis products into Australia has rapidly increased in the recent years. Yeah, because the government doesn't allow people to grow it here. Pathetic. While the import of medical cannabis in Australia has been crucial for allowing patients wider range of products, it still has major limitations. Yeah, like cost, like sitting in custom for so long and depleting and not becoming medically active. Uh, in Australia, cannabis is still classified, yep, and bad unless you live in the ACT. There are several licensed companies. Australia, no, come on status of importing unless they are ex exempt of being entered into the heart uh, tga in australia must be registered so you must be registered before you can be supplied regulatory support for importing producing yep so under that tga is dean uh, the importer must include information that, as well quantity as well as their application for their license i presume that's just your tga number You'd get your TGA off your prescription. It would have your number and your license on it. Importers should confirm that the something exporter already possesses license. I don't know. Well, if you go to this website, these people will help you. The exporter must have a license, which this people does, or approval from their own government, which they do. Sponsors only. Uh, no. As well as the medication supplied, finishing medical products. Starting medical, starting materials are not finished medical cannabis products instead. Finished products are those that can be given to a patient. In order to be lawfully import, export manufacturers, yes, must go through the rules. But you can do it. I was surprised. Where does it say the individual person though? If, under the TGA, finish. Medical cannabis that are imported to Australia are exempt from the requirement to be entered in the AT, AT, R, the ARTG as long as they are kept under the sponsor's direct control until they are supplied through one of the recognised distribution channels for unregistered medicines. The authorised prescriber scheme or a clinical trial or oh, clinical trial notice. See, there you go. You want to put together RNA uh, clinical trial? Think uh, why the weed nerds here should uh, start using African cannabis as a suggestion? Wow! <laughs> Follow the rules, mate, or approval, or those routes. Uh, Sponsors control. Okay, this gets a little bit into it. I was hoping to see for the purposes of the TGA Act, the sponsor of the goods will typically. This is getting into the delivery versus wholesale in Australia, it is against the law to distribute unlicensed medical cannabis goods through wholesale agreements, even if the supply is made, or by a wholesaler who is authorised. This is still a situation if a sponsor, so this, then the TGA further stipulates that unless the goods are 
registered or listed, it is illegal for someone who is not a sponsor of the unapproved TGA goods to another person who is not. Okay, so you can't, so for yourself though, it might be, so you can't give it to anybody else, but you can, this doesn't say you can't use it for yourself. Although finished cannabis products kept under provided different pathways exemption. Yep, so you can't sell them, you can't give them away to anybody else, that's what that's saying. Sponsor retains ownership and direct control of products until they are supplied or used, and they may employ third parties to help them look. Oh, I okay, go, that gets into a bit technical. Popular strain to know. Uh, that's their facility. Maybe cannabis is still too far accessible and out of price. Yet, quality cannabis may be grown very cheaply in many parts of the world, like Africa. We are bringing it to Germany. Yes. Okay, good. Branding, fit, logistics, processing. All right. Interested? That's what the woman says. Oh, no, here it is. See, it was down the bottom. Can I import medical cannabis for personal use in Australia? In short, yeah, mate. It is possible to import it for personal use if you have a valid prescription from the TGA. That's it. How do, how do we apply to do it, mate? Well, you've got to, to import the cannabis, you'll need to submit the application to the TGA under their special access scheme. This involves providing documentation and the such. So what types of medical cannabis can I get? Well, the TGA lets you get heaps. You can get oils, captured, tinctures, 90%, isolates, distillates, whatever you want, mate, the TGA reckons. So can I import medical cannabis from any country? No, no, no. You can only import medical cannabis products from countries that are legalised and regulated their use. Additionally, the TGA has a list of overseas approved manufacturers that you can source your products from. Thank you, TGA. So how much does it blimmin' cost to import it into Australia? Is it top dollar or what? Well, the cost of importing medical cannabis does vary on several factors, including the type of product, quantity, shipping fees. Additionally, you may need to factor in the cost of customs clearance fees and taxes that apply. It is recommended that you seek advice from your chosen supplier and a customs broker to determine the full cost right. So you can do it, but the cost might exceed all the hassle. Rad, there it is, down the bottom. <laughs> yay, 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 you can do it. Hey, yield source, how you going, mate? Yes, actually, yield source, have got some new HLDV information too. You missed last week's show. Ned Kelly says, yes, interesting. It is sure interesting. Oh, your source, how'd the pathology lab go? What did they say about your tissue sample? I hope it was not HLDV related. What was that study I was going through? Let me just bring it over. I was actually in the middle of reading it. Here we go, this one. I'll just bring it over here. No, nope, can't transfer, why not? And it is. And I'll show you, use folk as well. Because there's some interesting things about the HLDV, how it's just getting through the world. Old Zamir in Canada has been doing some rad studies on it. Dead set. Okay. Well, it looks like we'll have to get it ready first. Sorry about that. Uh, there it is. There. there it is. Now we'll try again. So we go back to here. Shows that. Uh, it's got some pretty cool pictures. Some updated pictures of comparisons on what to look for. All right. Here it is up here. Yeah, it's, it's in here. Punja. 
he's a he's done tests for a while he's worked for with this is excellent let's get down to the photos it's quite few of them oh, of course there's not where's the only others the stacks of photos he's put in display table oh really i've got to get the other version okay hang on i'll put the pdf across so i'll leave it to that and because it's pretty it's it's interesting it's i've been working with it for at least 12 months too so the pictures aren't new to me but for someone who's uh not familiar with it they would think it's a toxicity and that's what they've also said from folks online too on linkedin remember that i showed an article a while ago where Everybody was saying deficiency, this, 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 and this, this, and it was something that was, I think it was related to this. Sharing screen, yep. This one. Hopefully this one's got more of the pictures in it. I don't know if there's the table, good. Yeah. So you can see there's the pictures. I'll just zoom in a bit. So see here, that's what it should look like. But after you stress it out a bit, it starts to show symptoms and you think, oh, look at that. That's just a little notch. That's starting to notch you. Or it could be a phosphorus. Look at the burnt tips. No worries. That's all right. And then you'd spray it and then it would actually fix itself up. It would get better. But what the problem is, it's the latent problem. Is once you put the hot latent virus disease under a bit of stress, it shows these symptoms. So you can successfully grow with it and have a yield while still having it the genetics there. Oh, no, was in there. I'm just going to stay out because there's quite a lot of photos here to go through. Where's the graph that shows in Canada? Here you go. Look at this. I wonder if shipwreck's still there. You should hope so. It shows that um, this is the samples. The incidence of hot late, latent viroid in cannabis plants submitted to laboratories in Canada from 2020 to 2022. So you can see the number of samples submitted, the number of samples testing positive. So there's a humongous amount of BC has been happening since 2020. So you can nearly say that's where it came from. Then BC genetics has been shared with everywhere. So I wonder, I left there in 2018. I don't remember seeing anything like that. So it must be new in those little two months or about two years. Back to the symptoms. Yes, that's it. Just looks like anything. If you're going to get blotching, anything that's mottled like that, chlorosis, even like that, but the, the blotching, the ununiformity of the showing the deficiency is the, is the key thing. This is pretty cool. I'm going to have to zoom in here. I can't miss out on this. I was thinking, yep, exactly. It sort of scares me a bit even looking at it because it's just horrible. Like, you have to start again. Um, symptomatic means it's just showing the symptoms, and asymptomatic means A is means not, so it's not showing the symptoms. So here it is. You can see it's not showing, but it still tests positive for it. But it's just not showing it at the symptoms. So once you stress it out, that's when, so the best way is to stress your cultivar, and then you should be able to see if it shows any of these symptoms. So see, you think, oh, a bit of a nitrogen. But, and look, it's still growing out, fine. See here? Flower. So another good way that I say too is you should be getting buds with four finger wide. Put your hands behind them and close your fingers and it should be at least four fingers. If it's one or two fingers, bang, it's a high chance you've got the viroid or some you've got other problems. So that's my little way. There's a few little telltale signs to detect it. And look at the samples on the roots with the testing positive for it. So they've still got a result. You still harvest, but the reduced tri um, trichome content is so much lower as well. I haven't even finished going through this yet. I don't even know if she's wanting to see this. This is more examples of it. The arrow shows that one with it under stress, so showing that it's under the effect of the hot latent viroid. See, not, see how it's sort of normal even it looks? 
I'm so glad in a way that I've worked with it the last 12 months. Yeah, and that's a telltale sign too, the frost factor. If you normally, most of these new cultivars, you get frost on the fan leaves and the major fan leaves, the big ones. If you've got none on it, and even a lot of the sugar leaves, we used to call them, you know, they've got frost factors low on them too, I'm finding. Uh, this just shows the stunting of the growth, this one. So it still grows, but it's stunting because it's putting a lot of its plant, its um, growth and development, it's going straight into the immune system to try and combat the problem. This is showing the output of the stem, the little growth that it's getting. It's putting a little bit of growth into it, not a large amount into the those Column chimer, column chimer cells. Here's the buds. So still you've got a result. And they're thinking, oh, it's just yellowing at the end. That's fine. It's all looking all right. Just normal yellows. Look at this. This is just sweet yellowing. It's, yeah, testing positive. Same with the buds. Remember, you can get the, the viroids on the outside of the bud too. So if you touch it by, from the dispensary and go to your garden, you just go and inoculated your plants. Look at this one, you think, rad, it's got more purple and it's got yep, it's a lot more anthocyanins is happening, better um, extraction, but it's not as good. It'll test low, lower on the results. There's hanging oz sealed all the frost compared to the not frost. Here's a good frost factor one. HID being negative, positive. Look at the frost on, the, on here. Or the trichomes, virtually none. And they're all just reduced and shrunk. If you put it under the microscope, and under the microscope shows all those ones that are popped. All sessile, not stalk capitate. There's some sessile ones in later stage, but as you can see, they're not fully, the bulb size is so much smaller. consistency look at those deflated trichomes that's a good telltale sign isn't it so if you, you see that under the microscope it's the first thing you do grab your microscope put it under that oh yeah man they're looking a bit weird looking looks like they've uh, they shrunk or something uh oh <laughs> what's wrong with e e compared to the shrunken trichome head of an infected brack and then compared. I just oh, this says marks, those little bruises on the top. I wonder what they mean. It doesn't say it in here. I haven't been down this far yet in this study. You've just seen it for the first time with me. Actually, DB negative has a good yep, yeah, THC that you want and with a respectable terpene. HLDB positive 15%. So that's that half the amount. Terpene's still pretty high, but it's still putting out bits of help signals. There you go, there's a nice discussion. Oh yeah, that's a nice little drawing. Healthy infected. Oh wow. All right. What's this the number of trichomes? Everything's lower. See the black bit with the infection? Everything's just lower. Yep, terpene content, about the same as you'd expect. What else is there? That's probably about it. Acknowledgements, funding. These are legends, he's done so much good work. But yeah, that is something else. Thought I'd share. So yes. Hey, how are you going, Fargus? Nice to see you, mate. Is there any questions? Please. I've run out of things that I was going to talk about today. So I can go and talk about other stuff. That's the only couple of topics that come to point. So if you've got any questions, I'd love to go on about it. So yeah, it's a shame you'll source and get back to us. I'd like to have heard about how I presume he had good results because if he had bad results, he would have uh, probably talked more about it. 
so I'd say they weren't HLDV positive yet. I say yet because it's only a matter of time. As per that article, it's yeah, everywhere. It's horrible. And people misdiagnosing it doesn't really help. Uh, and you know, I'll wait for you to think of the questions. I can tell you about next week's show is blooming excellent. It's all about, I'll give you a sneak peek, so I really like the slides. It's about um, the future in cannabis. What are we going to have in the future in cannabis? More room. All these slides are going to go through. And look how scientific they are. There's quite a few of these. I can show you the ones that were in the in the article in the slide I made. So they're all what's going to happen in the future, or what they think is going to happen. What's going to happen with artificial intelligence in relation to medical cannabis? What's going to happen with industrial hemp in relation to the future and how they see the world's going to go? How because this is no. Yeah, artificial intelligence. That's a good little spiel on that section. The future on it, it's just amazing. You can all see it like that because it's so needed everywhere. Remember, it was one of the six plants, the five plants that they proposed to take to Mars is the cannabis plant. It's at the bottom. There it goes. I think there's a few more picks in that. Yes, yeah, so a couple of little articles I pulled out from that, and quite a few slides that I've prepared and I've been saving for a while on what's going to happen in the future in cannabis, medical cannabis, I should say. Cannabis, you know, about the future of that. It's, you know, it's um reason why I call cannabis so much is because of Henry Anslinger in the Spanish word marijuana. How he outlawed it and made it a de de devil's poison back in um, the 1900s, 1930s actually. Took it out of the, is that it? No, it was taken out of the American Medical Association in about 1930s as a prescribed drug because he demonized it and made it illegal and called it um, marijuana. That's why he referred to it. Street marijuana is the crap and the good stuff's medical cannabis grown properly under strict conditions and under uh, with good genetics. Hey, got a question. Thank you. Question comes from Fargus and says, how can I sustain an auto flower strain with clones? Oh, that's a preliminary question to me because I haven't had much, I haven't been playing much with auto flowers. Apparently they've, they've they're touchy little numbers they just don't like being cloned and fiddled with. Uh, so what I would be doing is I would induce it with some silver I'd uh, and it would throw out some pollen and then I'd use that pollen. And then I would maybe cross it with something else so I could get other uh, autos that I liked. Or you could do a tissue culture and try and bring back that original plant from the pollen uh, that's how I would be playing around with them because the things I've heard aren't very good with cutting them and all that sort of stuff not to say it can't be done and it's who's to say too that you haven't got a direct ruderalis uh, it'd be some sort of hybrid so it might take better for those types of things but the ruderalis doesn't act on a photo period it just goes from time. So that's why if you take a cut, you'd take a cut and it would, even under 24 hours of lights, it would still keep growing and flowering and then it would just die after the 120 odd days or whatever it's period is. Uh, yeah. Autoflowers. I've got the uh, ELF3 gene out of an autoflower 
and I put that in with the line and that's hypnogenic line and that allows things to finish a bit early. The early flowering gene, that's very rad out of the autos. So I, by getting the pollen, watch some of the videos I've made on how to do that, you get the pollen and then you just save it and store it properly and when you need, you find your plant, your keeper plant, you would pollinate it and then you uh, do a marker selection where you look for the traits that you want, which might be that early flowering, which means after day 50, after the day zero since you've flipped the lights, day 50 days later, that plant is fully mature. It's dying. You can see it's fully finished its cycle. There's no more white anthers or pistils. They're all the red and curled up and finished, done. So yeah, auto flowers have really, they're cool. I hope that sort of helps, mate. Just, I've got a uh, next course coming up in the end of January when uni starts back up is a plant breeding course. So I can't wait to get into that. Aaron says, constant seed breeding. I don't think autos can be successfully kept as a mother plant. Yeah. Not that I've heard, but if you get one without that shows it's a like a, it is an auto, but it's still hybrid. But you couldn't expect to take a cut of that plant and put it under direct sun and for it to bring out ruderalis traits not having a photo period. So if you want to change it from having a photo period to not having one, that's um that's beyond me. I'm not to say it can't be done, you just off the top of my head. I can't think of how you can. I'm sure you can definitely do it though. Uh, I, yes, I agree with you. You can't. I don't think you can keep them. Well, actually, you can't because they're they finish their cycle. They're not photo periods, or just fully seed one. Then you should have enough for years to come. Yes, yes, that's what I reckon too. I'd grab the pollen and put that on a keeper, and then you know that would has a chance with those the offspring being auto plants. But you have to test that because. It might show traits on the parent that didn't have it. Yeah, I've heard that not cloning. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, it's just because it's not photo period. It's, um, but definitely induce it. Put some silver onto it, mate, because that'll help you at lots. Because remember, when you do that, you're only doing it to one branch. You're not doing it to the top of the middle of the plant and it's going everywhere. You're spraying the branch that's in the corner that doesn't get much fan on it. And you're only gonna spray it for 15 days, three or four sprays a day, and the silver's gonna block the ethylene that emits out of the, to induce female, femaleism. So you're blocking that signals to put it into male. And then after probably, I don't actually, I, yeah, I just finished, I just did one with pukin. And um, if you don't want it to open pollinate, you put a bag over it after about 25 days after it's fully mature and then all those sepals that you've got the little round pollen sacs they you keep them you store them the same as you do your seeds in the bottom of the back of the fridge with heaps of desiccant in a few containers and then pull it out when needed and i've used my pollen up to five years and actually seeds i've successfully stored that way up to three years too it's, um, I just did a test recently to see what was going on and thought oh, I'll put seven and six popped. I thought only three is going to pop because, you know, you only have four plants, got to do the legal thing. And six pops. I thought, holy mackerel, they're three years old. <laughs> six out of seven. So stored properly really helps. But, yeah, try some of that, mate. Go look at some of my videos and get some 50 ppm colloidal silver and um, induce it. It's, it's well and truly worth it, and then you can store it, and it's a good way to keep genetics long-term as well through seed and through pollen because if the, that hot latent virus disease, as an example, uh, like uh, well, pink death bubba, recent pink death bubba has hot latent virus, and old-school pink death bubba doesn't have it. So I can just go and crack some of those seeds, which I did, and bang, start again. So that's the benefits of backing up your genetics, especially when you find keepers. 
I wouldn't backing up. I wouldn't be backing up genetics just for the fun of it. Or if you haven't done it before, try it. But um, down the track, you want to really just back up the keepers, because once you keep it, like Nukin, I miss Nukin so much. Nukin, it was, I got cross, but I haven't brought Nukin back. But yeah, backing them up helps. Good question. Thank you, mate. What else can I talk about? Can I show some slides instead of just me gas bagging? What sort of slides would you like to see? Vargas or anyone else? Can I show you on some suggested things we can talk about? I can't wait in. Uh, I'll be sharing my plant breeding stuff because it goes right into, into detail about marker-assisted selection and some other, just a lot of interesting topics that, and the course has been written uh, last year as well. <laughs> so it'll be good latest information, which I really enjoy. Because I just found out his, Gregory, Gregor Mendel is um, a geneticist from, oh gosh, around Charles Darwin's time in the late 1800s or early 1800s, I think. Oh no, don't quote me. And anyway, he's helped with, actually it's the 1700s. He did some breeding, plant breeding with peas. And it turns out that one of his experiments was biased towards him, his knowledge, to his words. He suggested an outcome and he changed the outcome to suit his words, it was it? So it's, I was shocked and, yeah, sort of disgusted to hear that because that's why these days they've got heaps of different scientific studies and they do heaps of studies around the same thing from heaps of different places. So you get uh, an overall picture of is that a biased saying or not, just like that. Um, oh, here's an update for you. I said there was a study published in New York about the heart heart attacks, how cannabis makes heart attacks improve, no, how, worsens heart, you know, is bad for the heart. And I wrote to the two authors on that and one of them got back to me uh, through the week and he sent me, he sent me a, actually I'm just going to show this, I'll try and get it up. He sent me a pre-article paper because it hasn't been released, the paper yet. And he said when it gets released, I'll show it to you. Where's the other screen? That one. Here it is. Abstract. So it's doesn't show actually. I'll just share it first. So this is the abstract on what's going to come out soon. Uh, but it didn't really say much detail. It just went on to say that the, they tested a lot of people from 157,000 people. There were a lot of, there was an increased risk of incident of heart failure, HF, over the 35, 35 months that they did this. But they've, who knows how in depth they go into or their background, like uh, heart disease, I think, is genetic too. So you can, it's passed down the line. So who's to know about that? Let's have a look at this. I'll download this then. Oh, it's just it's that same page that you can't zoom on. <laughs> Has a ratio of frequency of cannabis use. So I presume, see what's that even say? I don't know what the scale down the bottom is. 1.2, never used or referred, frequent users. It would just support, use daily is worse. Oh yeah, okay, it's above the line, threshold. And use monthly might be better. But yeah, just interesting to read all the facts and things like that to see why they, how they got to that point. Right. Abstract. Yeah, but at least, yeah, anyway, that's the update. See how it goes. I'll go through it a bit and see if it's biased or something like that, which I suggest it's got to be. Who knows? Uh, just blinky say. 
those witches' hands looking weird leaves. I've got two looking the same. Should I pull them or see what happens? I don't want to hurt my strong, vigorous seedlings. Uh, you should 100% separate them because once the plants, they can, if you don't bring out the hop latent viroid, it's like not under stress conditions and it's still maintaining its, everything's all right. It's not transmitting it as much because it hasn't got into the tissue to make it go volatile and for it to be shared. So it's just still sitting around inside waiting for a stress event for it to go and then overact the plant, which will destroy tissue and that sort of stuff. And then it allows it to share it. So maybe the ones you're with in the room they've blood grown good enough so far that they haven't been under stress and that one's showing a little bit of stress somehow and now once it's stressed out that's when it's through allelopathy especially it can transmit and i don't know if the viral can go through allelopathy actually no i can't because that's um when it's changing chemicals and that's not a chemical so but it still can once the leaf curls and you've got a bit of dead tissue and that tissue might be it'll be dead and the viroid might be on the outside of the tissue and it can just go in the air from a little bit of air and go onto a healthy leaf and then once it's into a healthy leaf it's into that plant so if it was me i'd be separating it and that's the, the whole thing that is coming out of this hop latent viroid is if anybody gets new genetics you have to set up a quarantine tank a uh, tent and grow them out there first and put that plant under shitloads of stress and see if it reacts. Take a cut and see if that the cut, the clone, develops gamosis as well, which is another sign of uh, that viroid. So by doing those few things, you can really reduce its spread. But once it's in to your genetic line, um, from what I've seen, I've I can't get rid of it. I haven't got much of a, a lab to do meristem cultures, which is about the only way I think you can get rid of it. Uh, I've tried doing some of them, but it's I'm not set up correctly to do a lot of them, to have success as much as I'd like to. But yeah, you have the future is the isolation tent, just like uh, people with aquariums. Now they get new fish brought in, you're supposed to put it in a quarantine tank for a month or so. You should do that with any new seeds because it's on it's tested it's on side outside of seed coats on the tester on the outside they the viroid exists there too it's on buds you get from dispensaries so the chances are and people getting it especially in north america is extremely high canada it's already probably been through but north america it's um yeah look out it's not good take all sorts of precautions to try and mitigate its sterility you know in your garden that's how i go about the future now probably for the next bloom and how many years i don't know many many years because who knows how long this is like covid it's going to be around for a while i think and it's not one that's well they'll have to develop there'll be cultivars that will develop resistances to it but that's um that's a fair way away from what i see so yeah quarantine is the go Winky says they're from Oregon. Yeah. You know, it's just over the border from BC. That's what that study shows, the amount that we're in. I'll just bring up that study again because it's pretty cool. It's very recent, actually. That's the volcano one. that little table at the start this one so there's all the provinces in canada and the number of tests samples testing positive where at the start it was bc heaps and now it's gone up in the other states once the genetics have been shared and now it's becoming pretty even so look in bc it's dropped off a lot because possibly they've got resistance now but um yeah and these seeds and clones and all sorts have been shared everywhere so if you, who knows, just that's why you have to really just watch out for the symptoms. 
So looking at all these photos is just very, very handy for identification. Because, and the best way that it's if you've got a deficiency is to see that if it's uniform. If it's not uniform, if it happens down the bottom and the top and all sorts, you've got problems. Good on you, Dr. Punja. Zamir, very good. Uh, put them in the bin. Uh, well, remember, that's what last week or a few weeks ago, um, someone on, on here too had a similar problem where they saw they many, many other pathogens and diseases and viruses show the same symptoms. So you can't go and jump to a conclusion that you might have the hot latent viroid. I would just go to try and rule it out just by doing all these things by first isolating it and then going to clone it and put it under stress and all that sort of thing and then see if you can get it to shed it. Take a tissue sample and look on the pathology lab and get them to test it. It'll probably cost you a hundred bucks and then they'll test it and they'll say what's in your tissue, what problem do you have in it? They'll do a pathogen test or a viral test or you can ask for something like that. And um, just that's what old mate did the other day. So it's don't I wouldn't that's just my opinion. I wouldn't be throwing stuff out. I'd just be quarantining it. Because most other things, all these symptoms show up from other I first thought I had chlorosis virus, which was from a pseudom pseudomonas uh, pseudomonas species. Can't, can't think of the species name. But yeah, that's why for us thought chlorosis virus and then learnt more, got more educated and got holy mackerel. I've got that. I've got this. And then did all the tests. Yep, that's true. That, 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 that. And then found everything tested positive and the, all tests that I did and then learnt from it. Thought, oh, I can get rid of this. I'll just do all this. I'll end a fight, change the end of fights inside of it. Um, and it worked for some resistant cultivars, but not for the others. Um, I tried cloning no i tried merit stem cultures uh, i failed because of my conditions uh i tried quite a few different things and then working with it can you how close does it have to be to another thing for it to get infected and i've worked that out um there's it's been a good learning curve so i haven't, haven't been upset over the past 12 months i've been upset because i've been on rations and I've been very upset in that sense. And, but yeah, it's been a good learning curve for me for at least I know in the future about this problem. It can be, yeah. Um, oh, wow, nearly an hour. That's the way. Jeez. Well, I'll tell you what, next week's won't be going back for, going back, going for an hour because it's all the future stuff. I like talking about that the future things, what's going to happen. Uh, I might be able to even give away some of my secrets. Yeah, why not? Who knows? We'll see anyway. On stuff that I'm working on and what I think is going to happen, how future people can make money out of it. Because it's going to be legal everywhere soon, worldwide soon, once the government stops opening their hands so much, they'll realise that they don't. They'll be getting it from other sources like dispensaries or from shops or from pharmacies, drugstores that'll be holding all this medical cannabis that they've been allowed for people to grow. They think that from allowing legalisation and us to have six plants in flower in Australia, Australia-wide, is going to hurt them. But they've got, they might lose a few scripts because people will be getting medicine from somewhere else, but they'll be having cannabis care lounges. They'll be having all these other avenues they'll be, that they can profit from. So they'll still be getting their taxes but they're just not clever enough to think like that yet. They just don't want to hold their fist open and have it as a cash cow. Yeah, we can charge 300% tax. It's okay. They'll pay it. They've got to pay it. It's not legal. Yeah, that's right. While the politicians, I'm not going to get in that route. So it won't be, won't be, um, won't be long. Hopefully. Cheers. Appreciate the advice. Yes, you're welcome. Well, it's something that's, it's the COVID of the cannabis industry. That's what someone should title their show. That's the hoplaton viroid 
and I could share if anyone wants any of these studies I'll be happy to share them there's I think I've got about three now with a minute that's yeah it's it's mega scary nearly everything else you can come through and fix but the hop latent viroid it's um it's horrible hey purple thumb how you going mate yeah if you haven't purple thumb if you haven't heard of hop latent viroid yet uh you have now and you've got to watch this show and a few other shows I've, I've done i think three streams on it now went through a few different studies it's horrible it's only a matter of time quarantine is the rule quarantine you girls you knew things that come in and then use bleach remember it was a cleaning solution that was the 10 percent clorox bleach plus 20 percent uh dry fat milk powder and that was a solution that they'd mixed up and they found that you could store that for a long time and also that the viroid couldn't live in bleach for longer than a few minutes so it still can survive but that was the most effective tool they used on it so it's your quarantine tank and cleaning all your tools and everything with that is uh, the new COVID practices in the cannabis industry for the next few years. I don't want to repeat myself again. But, yeah, it's, it's pretty rad. It's, it's a good eye-opener. <laughs> I won't repeat it. Uh, Purple Thumb, it's an open topic today, so if you've got any questions, rip them in because I'm just nearly at the end and this hasn't been, yeah. Oh, no, 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 this is even worse, mate. The HLDV is being tested on the outside of seed coats. So if it's been produced, when the plant gets it, it tries to reproduce itself because it's it can't succeed, it can't produce its growth and development. So it goes into reproduction and fight and its plant's immune system. So if you test those seeds, they test with the viroid on the outside of the seed coat. So if you go and plant that, that's um, going to get it as well. Once that breaks down, it'll get into the soil matter and it'll slowly get its way into the plant tissue and into the rhizosphere once it sits under there and it's gone. And then it could also be in your hands as well. So um, any new seeds you get, you should be putting them in a bleach solution for, what would I do? Uh, probably 30 seconds in a bleach solution. Take it out, let it dry, paper, wash it with water so you don't kill it because it is an organ. You know, seeds have stomata and they got other pores and stuff on the outside too, so you've got to be careful. But um it's yeah, it's pretty bad how it shows on the outside. Uh the leaves. You have to um I don't know what that means, I'm sorry. Cheers. Should I make a mix and will kill the environment? Yeah, well, that's a solution. Last week, so I went through the disinfectant study that they had on that viroids for it, and that was the outcome of it. So that's what I put into my practices. I used to only use ISO 70% mixture, but now I've also got that. I've got, yeah, I've got the, that mixture up made as well because it's, it's around. I've got it. So I've got it to be only um, precautions over all sorts of things like a good practice is once you get out of the shower then you'll get your you'll save your new genetics or what you're doing for those types of things then so you know at least your hands and stuff are clean that's practices I've done that for quite some time yeah this new stuff's been a scary um, yeah some horrible stuff there yeah well it's a matter of time everyone will get it mate because it's it's even on the outside of buds so if you get some buds or friends or dispensaries even it's um it's there then you go to the garden so yeah you should really after your shower that's when you do garden duties because you know at least you're clean and your clothes are clean because the viroid can get on the outside of clothes and can blow you've seen uh, fungal spores how that just drops off the bottom of the fungi and when you tap it and it just gets into the wind with that dust so it's, it's very aerosol, it's that small size of the air, very much. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just horrible. It's to see 
plants and think, okay, this plant's going to get, uh, this should be getting, say, four ounces. Bang, no. Not even going to get, lucky to get half an ounce. It destroys yields. Some plants don't finish. Uh, and you think, oh, I'll put in these, I'll keep a genetics from ages ago. And then you put it in with one plant that still has it. And all of a sudden, it's just gone and passed it on to the other ones. And within a matter of a few, oh, let's say within a week, you'll see the other ones getting, showing symptoms. And if they haven't got any, I put a lot of resistances into my genetic line. So if I get things that haven't got those resistances into it, they will show a lot quicker than the, my genetic line, as an example too. So you can see which ones are prime genes. It's, I think it's a matter of time for everybody to, they'll be working with it at some stage. But it's good to be aware of it, what it is. And the way that I ruled first when I did it, I ruled out the deficiencies and it looked like potassium or nitrogen or magnesium. So I went with the chlorosis. Uh, so I went and made up foliar sprays, 100 ppm mixes of those, and that usually fixes it. Put amounts of that onto it, and within a few days, that's all gone. And I knew, well, it's not working this time, help. And then tried replacing endophytes, and then went on from there and tried all different things. Then I got educated from uh, Dr. Zuma, and, oh, and yeah, learned heaps. But oh gosh. That makes heaps of sense. I know what I'm been working with now. This is scary as, and I haven't been able to try heaps of ways to get rid of it. And all it's done is just spread, and the yields are poor. The trichomes are so low that you think you're smoking old school leaf or chaff because um, the it's just not strong. Like remember the under the microscope, the trichs are shrunk and deflated. It's it's not good. Oh. Um, yeah. So I should nearly relabel this one HLDV again. I suppose I can. What else can I relabel it? What else did we talk about at the start? I just went on about oh, importing, importing medical cannabis. How it's you can legally import medical cannabis into Australia from Africa, and showed the steps. <laughs> yes, I can't get in trouble from that because you're legally doing it through the government just through their channels. Nothing to do with illegal. I respect the law. Yes, I do. And then just talked about the HLDV again through the other study on the volcano study, vaporizing. Oh, yeah. Well, that's all I think I can really talk about. I don't have, I'm not going to hold up the, the stream by just crapping on. If you've got anything, please write them desperately now. Or I'll give you 30 seconds, because it takes 30 seconds to come through. Or we'll be discussing things next week. Oh, I can tell you that too. The Greens Party in Australia, they suggested to me to write to a senator in Australia. And he hasn't gotten back to me. But we'll see how that goes. So I thought I'd try because I tried a little bit with the legalized cannabis party. They haven't seemed to do much. So I'm not going to, yes, I can only try so much. I'm not going to, geez. So that's good news. Not much has come through writing. So that's all right. So I've given it the time. So I'll have to say next week. I hope I see everyone there next week. And I appreciate everybody for listening again. Because next week is the future one, the future in cannabis or medical cannabis. What will it be? There's some cool slides and things on what it perceives the future is. And it's looking good. Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks, everybody, again. I appreciate your efforts for listening and writing and stuff like that. Hope you have a very good week. Happy breeding, happy growing, and good health to you all. Bye-bye.